the new Wall Street Week. Welcome to Wall Street Week, the show of record for long-term investing. I'm Anthony Scaramucci. And I'm Gary Kaminsky. Since the height of the U.S. recession, housing has made a spectacular recovery, showing less volatility than the stock market and more consistent growth than the overall economy. But as recession fears grow, what's next for housing? And there may not be a better person in the entire world than today's guest, Jimmy Grossfeld, who's the former CEO of Pulte Homes. He is currently an independent director at BlackRock. Jimmy, welcome to the show. Thank there you. may not be anybody better than you to tell us what's going on in housing. So give us a sense where you think we are in the cycle. Well, let me give you, it's a mixed bag. Um, the good part is that interest rates are at historic lows. Uh, you can get a mortgage for three and a half, three and three quarter percent interest, certainly below four percent right now. And if you um, understand mortgages, the interest and principal on a mortgage are the principal payments. They're the affordability part of owning a home. So if interest rates go up, um, it's awfully hard for people to afford homes. For example, if interest rates went up 100 basis points, um, that would be an increase of 20 or 25 percent in payments. That may knock a lot of people out of the housing market. So with interest rates being very low, that's very good for housing. On the other hand, we have issued right now the best mortgages in my lifetime, the highest quality mortgages, Fannie, Freddie, FHA, VA, they all have raised their qualification standards, which eliminate a lot of people from the housing market. So when I say there's a mixed bag, some people can qualify, some people can't qualify. Um, qualification, even if you can qualify, then there's the separate issue of does somebody want, does a family want, do they feel prepared to own a home? It's the biggest financial well, obligation of their life. Well, Jimmy, I want to ask you about that because I know you obviously have been one of the greatest investors in the world. There's a lot of viewers out here, and, and you read the demographics. You know many people since the crisis have opted to rent as opposed to buy. Yeah. What should people be thinking about if they want to buy? That is, as you said, the biggest purchase in most people's lifetime. What should they be thinking about, it, as opposed to just interest rates, about making the investment in a property? Owning a home is owning a illiquid asset that's not easily disposed of. On the other hand, owning a home is the most liquid form of real estate in the world. And that's because the underlying mortgages are liquid in America. But it's the largest investment that any family has. And I would suggest that before they make that investment, they feel, number one, can they qualify? And number two, even if they can qualify, do they feel comfortable with adding this additional economic burden? Mm -hmm. When you were CEO of Pulte, and I heard you speak many times about housing being like the heartbeat of the economy and yeah. that uh, housing lifts the tide of small businesses because most small businesses are tied into housing. And so my question, though, is where are we now in the housing cycle? Are we headed up, Jimmy, or are we plateauing, or are we on the way down? Let me give you my personal view. If you read the papers, they say that the last time we had a good housing market, there were about a million to single family starts. I believe that around 300,000 or 400,000 of those starts were because we had mortgages going back six, seven years that no longer exist in our economy. They were ARM mortgages. Mm -hmm. They were negative amortization mortgages. Subprime. They were a lot of subprime. Some, some subprime is okay. Some prime, subprime is going to get people in trouble. So. If you take around three or four hundred thousand off of that a million two number, you get a number of eight or nine hundred thousand left. And we're currently at around five hundred and thirty thousand. Two years ago, we were at three hundred and ten thousand. So there's a lot of room to maneuver upwards in housing. So you like the trend then? You think there's I a like positive the trend. housing trend? Okay, so that's good for the economy. Well, right let's talk about the economy and housing. If the next president comes to you in January, it says, Jimmy, I want to grow this economy at 4%. And I know that housing, as Anthony points out, can be a real big push there. What can they do? What can he or she do to make that happen? Okay, what, traditionally, what 
Washington has done, and Washington's power over mortgages is greater today than at any time in our lifetime, because they is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, as long as they are consistent in issuing high quality mortgages, I don't think it's a bad thing. But they really are the mortgage issuer now since the crisis. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the FHA, the VA, they issue 90 percent of the mortgages in this country. So if a president came to me and said, what can we do to help housing, the answer would be re, um, ease up on the qualification standards. That's traditionally what they have done. Well, we don't want to go back to where we were in 2008. That doesn't mean, that doesn't right. mean you're going to go back to where you were. You, you were at very um, so we've got, we've, bad mortgage. Right, we, we, we've moved from here where the subprime was obviously anyone could just get a liar loan and That's basically get a mortgage. But we've gone so much in terms of restrictions, regulation, that we've got to move it off. One of the areas that's well, going to... I think Jimmy's saying something about governmental control and mortgages. Yes, yes. like to see it relaxed a little bit. It can be relaxed. Qualification standards can be relaxed. One of the areas that's going to have to be dealt with is the first home buyer. The first home buyer used to be 40 percent of new home buyers. It's now closer to 30 percent. What's going on? Well, how many of these young people have a college debt? And the college debt comes in front of the mortgage debt. So how are they going to deal with that issue? That's very critical for a first home buyer. Jimmy, we've talked a lot about housing. I also want to talk about investing with you. Um, Anthony mentioned you're a lead uh, independent director of uh, BlackRock, yeah. great asset manager. Um, it's public knowledge because of the public filings. You made a very significant purchase in BlackRock common stock right after the crisis, which some say was the best insider buy in the history of, of uh, independent director buys. What do you think about the stock market right now and the overall value of stocks in general? My general sense is that the stock market is a reflection of very low interest rates. And the, as interest rates, if interest rates go up, if our economy goes better, it's going to be hard for the stock market to do very well. That's my own feeling. Well said. All right, well, Jimmy, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, great insight. We'll be right back with more from uh, Wall Street Week. Thank <laughs> you.